Soul Food Junkies, we have a new dinner for you guys tonight. Bidia Tacos, but we're gonna be doing something different. I decided we're gonna throw a Korean twist on this. We're gonna be doing Bidia Tacos along with Bidia Ramen. I'm gonna be using the broth afterwards and I'm gonna be throwing some ramen noodles in there so we can enjoy best of both worlds. I'm gonna show you guys everything that we have, all the ingredients, and then as I do it step by step, these are different tips and tricks that I've learned from some of my friends and people that I've known growing up. If you do it a little bit different, awesome. If you don't like what I'm doing, not a problem. I'm hoping that it's gonna rock out at the end of the day and hopefully our friends enjoy it as well. We've got a nice little group coming over and we're all gonna get down and just trying something different. So let's go. So here we have our beef. I'm gonna be putting a description as far as everything that I'm putting in here and uh, exactly what we're using. So don't worry about trying to keep up. We've got some guadillo peppers. We've got some ancho peppers. We've got some arbol peppers. I'm really, really going for different flavors over here. We've got our Florida oranges. We've got some nice limes. Can't do uh, tacos without limes. Got some beautiful Roma tomatoes. Beautiful piece of ginger. Some tomatillos, some white onions. You can use any color onions you want to, but all my friends use the white onions, so that's what I'm gonna be going with. We've got some Mexican oregano, some whole nutmeg, and cinnamon sticks. You can use the powder stuff, but I was told it just tastes a lot better with the stick, so we're going with the stick. We got whole cloves, bay leaves, garlic, and then some uh, olive oil, beef broth, bay leaves, cumin, thyme leaves, ground nutmeg, and black peppercorn. So I'm likely not gonna be using the ground nutmeg because I'm gonna be using the whole one. And I'm not gonna be using the tahine. I actually just have the tahine out in case any of the friends are wanting to use that later. In the description, what I'm gonna be putting the recipe down for is for two pounds. But what I'm going to be prepping today for is 12 pounds. Just because whatever I have left over, I'm gonna be sending our friends home with, and I'm actually gonna be going to the community and trying to be giving some away as well. Anytime I do these events, I'm gonna to try to get bigger and bigger and hopefully be able to help serve our community by bringing our food to other people and just hopefully help feed people and bring the energy around. Let's go ahead and start with the peppers. Each serving, we're gonna be doing four guadillo peppers, all right? So let's go ahead and do one set there. And do another set here. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. Huh. You know what? I don't think I want to throw these directly into the water. What we're going to be doing is take them and we're going to be tossing them on this pan right here. It's not a major thing. You don't have to do this, but I like taking the extra steps and really making sure that we get every flavor that we can. So we're gonna actually roast a few things before we get started. We're gonna be roasting the peppers. I'm gonna be roasting some onions, some garlic, and a few of the tomatoes, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the blender. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and toss these in the oven. While the chilies get prepped, I'm gonna get some garlic ready. Normally for like a, the two pound mark, you would be using two pieces. Because we're doing like six, I'm gonna probably do like a head and a half, maybe two. So all of these I'm gonna go ahead and try to get roasted. So while the chilies are roasting, this is a perfect time to go ahead and work on this. Just because these are gonna be getting blended in after the chilies are done getting steeped. Chili steep for about 20 minutes. They get rehydrated. So it gives plenty of time to go ahead and get the rest of this stuff done. I typically would have tried to get this ready last night, but I was exhausted. It's been a long week. But you always want to try to give the meat about three hours to marinate. So this is about a seven hour process. You'll take about an hour to get it ready, about three hours to marinate, and then three hours to go ahead and put a simmer. I can smell the peppers. It smells delicious. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the onions. They make my eyes burn. I tear up all the time. It's a very hard thing for me to deal with. And over this last year, it's kind of funny. 
I learned a hack for that that I had no clue even existed. I'm about to show you guys. Matchsticks. You could also take a piece of bread, stick it in your mouth. Boop. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take three onions and I'm gonna cut them, get the skin off. I'm not gonna cut them up a lot. They're just gonna be nice big chunks. Boom, just like that. These are gonna go over the top of the meat as it marinates. I think we're gonna go ahead and call it at four. I wanna make sure that I have enough onions left over for the toppings for the onions and um, cilantro. Obviously you can't have your tacos without cilantro and onions. I'm gonna take some of these big pieces, cut them up a little bit smaller. These are gonna be ready to roast. I'm gonna go ahead and put these to the side and I'm gonna get a few tomatoes cut up. Now that I have uh, the peppers roasted and everything else ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start steeping the peppers. So that's gonna sit for 20 minutes. After that's done, we're gonna go ahead and pull the onions, the tomatoes, and the garlic out of the roasting. We're gonna blend everything all together and we'll go ahead and start marinating the meat. All right, now we're gonna go ahead, everything's roasted, the peppers are steeped. We're gonna combine everything into the blender. Starting with our chilies. You could put in more if you wanted a little bit spicier. These are gonna definitely add a little kick to your stuff. Got the Mexican oregano, the Mexican hot chocolate, one tablespoon per each two pounds of meat. Bay leaves, thyme, our fresh cinnamon, fresh pepper, fresh ginger. I typically have uh, seen people use the dry ginger. It's typically, it's a little bit stronger. I just went with fresh ginger because it's my personal preference. Uh, and the whole nutmeg, I'm just using a small piece because of uh, the size. It should be around like the amount that I need. The cloves, the cloves are gonna be nice and beautiful because we roasted them first. Garlic cloves, cumin. We're gonna be doing about a half cup of vinegar. I have to use rice vinegar because I am gluten intolerant. Because I have so much stuff in here, I'm gonna go ahead and actually blend this together and make sure all of this is blended together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually dump my tomatoes in. I put a little bit of the chili water in there. Now I'm gonna put the chilies, let them all mix together, and then we're gonna have the marinade for the meat. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and de-seed these as much as possible. That way we're not gonna have a whole bunch of seeds in the broth itself. Inside the chilies, there's a little vein. You're just gonna pull that out, pull the seeds out. You don't have to go crazy with it, but just try to do what you can. And now we are going to go ahead and start marinating this meat. Big old chunks. And you want to get big chunks too. I've seen the way that some people do it. My way might be a little bit different than y'all's and that's fine. I'm gonna cut them into like, you know, still workable chunks. I just want to make sure that there's enough room for this meat to get marinated. If I seem like a little bit of a disaster today, it's a lot's been going on, so I'm a little bit all over the place. But we're gonna get this done. I'm gonna just go ahead and arrange these. And make sure that I can get that sauce all the way up in there. Now, because this is so thick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go ahead and mix in a little bit more of that chili water in there, mix it around, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in there. Now let's go ahead and mix that John back up. Let me go ahead and do uh, 
pour over the sink. And then we'll get all that in there. Oh yeah. What I'll end up probably doing is getting a third container and kind of transferring some of this over just to make sure that it has plenty of area to marinate. I did include a couple uh, spare ribs, beef ribs. I wanted to get a little bit of that bone marrow in there to help out coagulate that broth, just to add a little bit of extra flavor. The meat has been marinating for about three hours, a little bit over. I am going to be actually using the same boiler I used, if you guys remember my crawfish video, that we're going to be using the same thing in, just to make sure that we have enough room. I don't want to boil over, I don't want to have to use numerous pots, so I figured might as well just bring it outside and go ahead and do it out here. I just want to give this meat a little sear on the outside. I'm going to use a little olive oil, I'm going to dump it on inside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let each side get a slight sear before we go ahead and start dumping all the water in. Now that it's all in there, I'm gonna give some of these a turn. Make sure that they get that nice sear. Look at that. We're gonna let that get a quick sear. I'm gonna keep turning it, and then we're gonna go ahead and start dumping in the remainder of all the sauce that we had from the marinade. So all of this stuff right here is gonna go in there and then we're gonna start dumping water in. For the amount of uh, food that I'm cooking, I'm gonna be putting in about 24 cups of water. For everybody else, you don't have to necessarily put in um, that much because you're probably not gonna be cooking as much. So like I said earlier, check out the description below and I'll make sure that I add in everything for around two pounds of meat so it's a smaller serving size for everybody. We're gonna let that finish doing its thing and we're gonna start uh, getting ready for the water and the broth. See you guys soon. That is about our time. We are gonna go ahead and start dumping in the broth, uh, I mean the water, along with the beef broth and the rest of the seasoning. We did one tablespoon of beef concentrate per each serving. So for this one, this is six tablespoons. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that all over there. Just to make sure we fully utilize it. And then, that's about eight cups of water right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and start dumping in the rest of the seasoning. This next one is pretty large, so this is gonna be the one that's gonna add all that extra flavor. Let me go low so I don't splash Cali like crazy. That's it. We're gonna mix that up. We're gonna let it sit. We're gonna cook it on medium high for about three hours. And we're gonna pull it apart and it'll be time to eat. As it continues to cook, there may be a little bit of foam that collects on the top. We'll end up scraping that off. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and put the orange juice in there. There, for every serving of two pounds, we're gonna put a half orange in. So I'm gonna be putting in six halves. Three hours from now, we're gonna be grubbing out. It's gonna be a delicious dinner. Let's let it chill. This stuff is looking beautiful. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut up the meat, make sure that it's uh, workable for these tacos. You can see it's nice and tender. I can shred it with this fork. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna go ahead and shred it with a fork. And after all the meat is shredded and ready for the tacos, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that consomme and go ahead and put it in and let that meat marinate with it. I know I'm pretty excited. Check out this piece right here. I'm gonna shred all this up. Once I get that back in the broth, everything's gonna be really, really good. We'll catch up after we go ahead and finish uh, shredding all this meat up and we get it all marinated and get the tacos going. And it's ramen time. I'm gonna get this broth nice and hot and then we are going to dump our ramen in there. All right, got a timer right now. Water and the broth is boiling nice and hot. Let's go ahead and get these in there. Two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, let's go. These noodles are gluten free. They're rice noodles, so there's stuff that I can eat. Try to make it accommodating for everybody, obviously. Now I'm gonna take the shredded video and I'm gonna dump it back in the consomme so it's gonna get nice and hot. So what I'm gonna recommend everybody to do is after they get their video, they're gonna go ahead and put um, a little bit of lime, a little bit of cilantro and onion in there. You kinda eat it like it's a ramen taco. This is the way I'm gonna do it. Throw a little cilantro, throw some uh, onions. Squeeze a little bit of lime on top and good to go. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tortillas ready. I did uh, take a little bit easy way out, went to the local Mexican uh, um, grocery store called Alcaboco. These are gonna be dipped directly into the consomme and then we're gonna put them right on the grill, throw some meat in there and put them together. So after I go ahead and put the tortillas on, I take a nice piece of cheese, the olaka. It's a little bit of a difficult one to say. I'm pretty sure I probably butchered it, but this is a really easy melting cheese and that's the reason why it's used. So I put that down, make sure it gets uh, close to the heat and then we're gonna just go ahead and pile some meat on top. 